You're listening to Rabbi Arya Wolby from Torch, the Torah Outreach Resource Center of Houston. This is The Prayer Podcast. Welcome back to The Prayer Podcast. I'm very excited to announce that we're going to begin actual prayer. We talked, we had 11 classes on the introduction to prayer. I don't think 11 is enough. I think we need to have a 1,000 classes introducing us to the concept of prayer and to all the different angles of prayer. However, it's time to begin with Mode'ani. Mode'ani is the beginning of our day. Every morning we wake up, we recite the prayer of Mode'ani, giving thanks to Hashem. Now, it's an incredible gift that we have that we can communicate with the Almighty. And my hope and my prayer is that we can hopefully go through the entire prayer that we recite during the day, during the afternoon, the evening, the Shabbos prayers, God willing, we'll get to it. And I think the best part of this is that we're going to take one small paragraph at a time. We're not trying to get all of prayer at once. We'll have now a week to work on just these few words. Twelve words. Twelve words. That's it we're working on. That's it. And hopefully to connect as much as possible with these words to connect with the Almighty. So let's begin with Mode Ani Lifanecha Melech Chai Vekayam Shehezarta Bi Nishmasi Bechemla Rabba Emunasecha. I gratefully thank you, living and eternal King, for you have returned my soul within me with compassion. Great is your faithfulness. So let's start unraveling these words. Mode. Mode means I give thanks. I'm grateful. I give thanks. We start our day with thank you. The first words we recite, the first words we say when we open up our eyes, we start our day. What do we do? Thank you. It is the essence of Judaism. The essence of who we are is giving thanks. We're people of thanks. The word mode is the same root as the word Yehudi. Yehudi, we're Jews. We're from Yehuda. Hapam odes Hashem. I give thanks to the Almighty. It's an incredible, incredible gift. We never stop saying thank you. It is who we are. It's also the keys to happiness. If you want to be happy, do you know what you need to do? You need to say thank you. Say thank you every single day for every gift you have. We have so much going our way. We have so much to be grateful for. It's sad in our generation, 2024, where we have an abundance of food, an abundance of materialism, We have an abundance of clothes and of everything. And yet we have the highest levels of depression. We have the highest level of anxiety. It's the highest levels of 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 stress. Why? Because we're not being grateful. We're not being thankful. The first thing we do is we need to stop and say thank you. Open up your eyes. Hashem, thank you. Thank you for giving me life. Thank you for restoring my soul within me. Our sages tell us that our soul is returned by the Almighty every single morning. When we go to sleep, our sages tell us, the Talmud says, it's a 60th of death. It's like we're dead. God takes our soul, brushes it up. I remember my rabbi when I was in in grade school would say that when God takes your neshama, it's his precious, it's a precious part of God, so to speak. We're all godly. God says, blows it off, cleans it off. You got angry. It's okay. I'm going to clean it off. You were upset. I'm going to clean it off. God takes away all of the, you see how many times we go to sleep worried at night. We wake up in the morning like nothing ever happened. Where did it go? Hashem brushes it off. We start fresh. Hashem gives us new opportunities. Hashem gives us a new beginning. We say thank you for that every single day. Thank you, Hashem. We remind ourselves also of the world to come. We remind ourselves of the essence of the world to come is giving thanks. The entire world to come, what is it about? Giving thanks. You know why? Because thanks gives and brings closeness. When you're grateful to someone, it brings you closer. When you say thank you to someone, it brings you closer. 
Very interestingly, though, if you look at these 12 words, we don't have the name of Hashem. There are many different names of Hashem. None of them appear in the words of Moda'ani. There's no name of Hashem. Why? So that immediately upon waking up, we can say thank you. And this is the one blessing, one prayer that we can recite before washing our hands in the morning. And another thing we're doing is we're saying, Hashem, everything is yours. Me too. I'm also yours. Everything belongs to you. Modeani lefanecha. We're going to see each one of these words. When we say ani, modeani, you know, one of the things that we're closest to is ourselves. We take good care of ourselves, hopefully. We know when we're hungry, we know when we're thirsty, we know when we're tired, we know what, we, we know when we are restless, we know a lot about ourselves, hopefully. And hopefully through our Musr studies and our Jewish Inspiration podcast, we'll be able to identify more about ourselves. But the first word when we wake up should not be me. It should be thank you. Thank you, Hashem. And then, Modeh, thank you. I thank you. Me is the, sec- the second word. I am unique and special, which is why we say ani. We could have said, mode lecha, mode ani lefanecha. You know, you created me. You created me unique. You created me special. There's no other person like me. Hashem gives every single person a uniqueness a unique character, a unique personality, unique interests, unique talents, unique capabilities. And what am I ultimately? Am I body or am I soul? Ask someone, what are you? Well, I'm me. And everyone points to their heart. I'm me. What do you mean you're me? You're a soul. You're a soul that's clothed with body. And that's one of the things we want to remind ourselves every morning. Mode ani, not the outside me, not the physical me, the spiritual me, the lofty, holy soul that's within me. That's where I pour my thanks to you, Hashem. When I say ani, we're so fragile. What we're doing is we're putting ourselves, our soul in the hands of Hashem. We're putting ourselves in Hashem's hands. We're grateful to be yours, Hashem. I am lefanecha. I am here to serve you. I'm before you. I'm here to serve you. The most important thing, I believe, in this prayer is modeh ani. And that is, believe in yourself. Believe that you're worth something. Believe that you're incredible, that you're gifted, that you're talented. Believe in yourself. Don't doubt yourself. You know why? Because Hashem believes in you. Hashem says the world cannot exist another day without you. If we didn't have a job to fulfill in this world, Hashem would take us. But Hashem gives us another day. Because Hashem says you're going to accomplish great things today. Today you're going to be awesome. Today you're going to be incredible. I believe in you. So now we need to believe in you. We need to believe in ourselves. You are someone, you are something, and you are special. And then we say, Lefanecha, before you, Hashem. Modeh ani lefanecha, I'm grateful to you. But Lefanecha means before you. Establishing our relationship. It's me to you, Hashem. I am your servant. I need to serve you, Hashem. Not you serve me. I'm here to serve you. This perspective needs to remain throughout the day. That's why we start. I am before you. And hopefully throughout the day, I'll remember that that's the way it should work. The chain of command is Hashem is first. And we're here to serve Hashem, master of the universe, creator.
creator of heaven and earth, chose me. How powerful is that? Hashem chose me to be here on this earth to fulfill his wishes. It's a personal dialogue with you, Hashem. Lefanecha, I'm right before you. I'm talking to you. It's just me and you. Very personal. It's clear before Hashem our talents and our abilities. It's just like a parent who sees the greatness of their child. They know what they're capable of. It's even more so. Hashem created us. Hashem embedded within us all of our capabilities. Hashem sees it. It's open in front of him. Lefanecha, it's right open in front of you. Hashem sees our greatness. And Hashem believes in our greatness. Hashem wants us to bring it to full force. And then it's a reminder that all day we are before Hashem. We're in front of Hashem. Shiviti Hashem lenegdi tamid. When we're in synagogue, the halacha says we should always have the presence of God before us. It's lefanecha. It's these words. This one word. It's this one word that's guiding us. We're standing in front of a God. Hashem is also with you at all times. Hashem is lefanecha. He's right there in front of you. There's no need to be worried. There's no need to be afraid. Hashem is right there with us all the time. Even at the doctor's office, even when you're on trial, even when we all know a lot of things come come to reality when certain things hit. I'll give you an example. What do we do when we see the red and blue lights behind us of the police? Uh oh, they're pulling us over. We pull over. What's the first thing we do? We check. Are we wearing a seatbelt? Quickly, we put on a seatbelt. I know that I need to have my seatbelt on, but now that it's right in front of the police officer, I better make sure I have my seatbelt on. When we realize that we're standing in front of Hashem, uh oh, I got to make sure I talk properly. I got to make sure I act properly. I got to make sure I do the things that God, who believes in me, who's my biggest fan, I don't let him down. And then we say Melech. Melech. What is Melech? Melech is the king. God is master of everything. This is a sense of encouragement. There is nothing that is out of Hashem's ability. Hashem can and will do anything and everything that is right for you. If you're supposed to get that watch, you'll get that watch. And if you're supposed to get that dress, you'll get that dress. And if you're supposed to not get it, you won't get it. You can try everything in the world. It won't help. You know, the problem with theft, what is the problem with theft? Is that you think that the money you steal will help you. It's not going to help you. We see our sages tell us that there are nations that are committed to theft. That's what they do. This is their profession. But they don't become wealthier because of it. Just just as a quick analogy. You know, my... Grandparents owned a home in Lithuania. They owned a home, a very nice home. Had a big family. My, that's my paternal grandmother. My paternal grandfather had a home in Berlin. My maternal grandfather and grandmother each had homes in Hungary, in Czechoslovakia. What happened to those homes? They didn't sell it. It was taken away from them. And yet the Jewish people leave riches in every country they were in. In every country they were in, they left their homes, they left their businesses, they left everything. Started brand new. They come to New York, they have nothing. They come to Israel, they have nothing. And yet what nation is flourishing? The Jewish people are flourishing without the complaining. You took away our homes, you took away everything. That's not going to make you wealthier. It's not going to make you more successful. So you took it from us. Melech, Chayvakeim, there's a king of the universe. He is in charge of who gets what. Stealing means I don't believe in Hashem's pattern of how things should operate. I want to change that pattern and decide I should get something that is not deserving to me by grabbing it from your hand. I'll steal that watch. I'll steal your purse. No. If God is not going to succeed your way, 
You can steal everything in the world that's not going to help you. Don't try to break God's pattern of the world. What you deserve and what you, what's warranted for you, what Hashem decides is right for you is exactly what you'll get. What Hashem decides is not right for you, you won't get even if you try and even if you steal. It won't bring any blessing to your life. Which is why my rabbi always says, if someone makes a, a, a mistake, a business mistake, and you can, you can walk away with extra money, it's like, there's no blessing to it. Why would you want it? There's no blessing. Oh, it was, an, it was, it was a mistake. So I can, I, I don't need to report it. I don't need to this. I don't, no. You want what God has declared for you. Melech, he's the king of the universe. He controls everything. Hashem is our personal creator. Hashem creates everything that goes on in our world. Everything, every single worry you have, Hashem put it there to help you overcome things, to overcome challenges. It's all a work in understanding how Hashem operates the world and building our relationship with Him. That's Melech. What is Chai? Living. Hashem is a living king. Our faith must not be dry. It needs to be active. It needs to be present. Yeah, somewhere back there, I, 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 yeah, I believe in a, in a, in a God. Do you believe that God is living right now, here, taking care of us right now? Do you want to feel Hashem within you right now? Take two fingers and feel your pulse. Feel your pulse. You feel that pulse? That's Hashem pumping within you every single second. Life. You can feel it. It doesn't make sense. When, when, did you, when did you last recharge your battery so that your heart keeps pumping? No, that's Hashem giving us the ability for a, a body to function the way it does. That's godliness every day pumping in our, in our veins. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Melech Chai Vikayim. God is living within us. God is a living king. It's not some dry concept. Yeah, somewhere back there I believe in a God. God is true. Hashem Elokechem Emet. God is true. God is real. God is living. Real emuna. It's not a concept. Vikayam. What is Vikayam? Eternal. Eternal. God is eternal. We are temporary. Hashem is forever. Hashem is infinite. Hashem does not have a beginning. Hashem does not have an end. Hashem is always. So who do you, you know, we always need to have a constant. You always need to have a constant. What is our constant that we can rely on through thick and thin? He's been here a thousand years ago and two thousand years ago and 3,000 years ago, and before the world existed, and after the world will exist, Hashem is always here. So who should I rely on? My, my dollar that, that could disappear tomorrow? Should I rely on my parents who can disappear tomorrow? Should I rely on my children that can disappear tomorrow? Who should I rely on? There's only one existence that is forever. Chai v'kayam, God is living. V'kayam, God is eternal forever and ever. God is our constant. God is real. God is not a concept. God is real. So imagine, this is the way we start our morning. Modeh ani I'm giving thanks. Me, the little little nobody that you created. I'm not a nobody. I'm a somebody because you put me here. You believe in me. Lefanecha, I'm right here in front of you. Shehechaz, right? The melech kayam. King, my king, my creator. Living king. An eternal king. Now what? Shehechazar to be. Thank you so much. Shehechazar to be. You've returned my soul. You have restored it within me. Thank you for giving me life. It's that simple. Just life. Thank you for giving me life. How precious life is. Every moment that we live, every moment that we breathe, every moment that we have to celebrate, to have joy, to have existence. How much, if we knew that the end was near, 
How much would we pay for, to extend it a day? How much would we pay to extend it a week? To extend it a month? To extend it another year so I can have another birthday? All the money in the world. Whatever we have for life. What, what don't we give for life? Why is it so precious? Because life is opportunity. Hashem believes in that opportunity. Hashem gives us that opportunity every single day. Every morning you open up your eyes, Hashem says, guess what, sweetheart? Today's another great day for you to accomplish things. It's another opportunity to go chase your dreams, to go make things happen. Chai v'kayom shehechezarta bi nishmasi. Be within me. Hashem gave within me special character, special personality, special abilities. The world cannot survive without me. Hashem put this holy, lofty neshama, nishmasi, this lofty, elevated soul. You can be really great. I spoke to my grandmother of blessed memory. I spoke to my grandmother. I asked her, what was the atmosphere in her home? What was the environment in her home? What was going on, you know, on a regular Tuesday in her house? They said that my great grandfather, her father, empowered them with understanding that human beings are great. You're capable of unbelievable things. Don't get caught up in the little minutia. Don't get caught up in the little things. They never fought about, oh, you're using my brush. This is my thing. This is your thing. This, that. You're big. You're great. You can overcome everything and anything. You're valuable. You're precious. You know why? You have a neshama. A neshama is godly. It's not just you have, you know, this engine within you that pumps blood. No, 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 no. You have a neshama tahira. You have a pure soul within you. The neshama is always striving for more, always wanting more. That's a gift that we have. We have a neshama. A, 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 a stone does not have a neshama. Stone is just an object, okay? It's a stone. It's a domem. It's, it's in, an inanimate object. Then you have a tzomach, something which grows like a, a flower. It has some life. You know, stones have energy. They have some form of life, but it's called a domem. It doesn't, it doesn't start walking around stones. Flowers can grow, but it still doesn't have life. Then you have living creatures, and then you have mankind. Living creatures, they breathe. They, they, they do things. But then you have mankind. Man is a thinker. Man can speak. Man can articulate things in a way that no other creature can. But then you have a neshama. A neshama which is even higher than that. If we go Kabbalistically, there are different levels of a neshama. Neshama is so lofty. And it's, it's imbued into our body. And now this body has got to do lofty things. It's got to do great things. Not running away from things. Embracing things. Getting us closer to our purpose. We have an neshama that's always yearning for something great. It's not for the food. It's not for the drink. It's not for the entertainment. We can be running from one thrill after another thrill and still feel empty. Why? Because we're not feeding our soul. We're feeding our body. What we're reminding ourselves every morning is that we're in a shama. Shechazarta bi nishmasi. You gave me an ashama. Not just something to feed me physically, but to feed me spiritually. Rabba imunosecha. And then we stop after Bechemla. Kama. Pause. Rabba imunosecha. Great is your faithfulness. God gives us another chance. He believes in us. He gives us another chance. How was yesterday? Eh, it wasn't such a great day. Well, you know what? I'm going to give you another chance tomorrow. I'm going to give you another chance. And I'm going to give you another chance because God believes in us. Hashem is like 
no other custodian. You know, you bring in your coat to the coat coat room at a at a wedding. How do you know you're going to get your same coat back? And sometimes they get mixed up. You get a different coat. Maybe maybe I get a different neshama back. No 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 no. You get your neshama back. Your special neshama goes back to you. Shem is is trustworthy to get the right neshama to the right person. Hashem doesn't mix up items. Hashem returns our soul refreshed and renewed. And Hashem gives us another chance, another start over again. You got this. Even if you're undeserving, you can do it. Hashem believes in us. And Hashem believes that we can do it. Hashem is our biggest fan. Rabba Emunah Secha. Emunah means to believe or to, to, to have knowledge of Hashem. But Hashem believes in us. Hashem believes that we are capable of greatness. Hashem says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you another opportunity because I know you can do it. I'm your biggest fan. I know that you can accomplish. And that's why I'm giving you another day because this day is going to be the greatest day ever. And that's how our day begins. I'm grateful before you, Hashem. Melech Chai Vikayam, living king. You're, you're forever. Shehazarta bin Ishmasi, you've restored my soul within me. Why? Bechemla, with mercy. I wasn't so deserving, perhaps. Rabbi Munasecho, because you believe in me, Hashem. You believe that I'm capable. You believe that I can do great things. You have put so much resources into me. Because you know that I can produce. It's one big encouragement, this prayer. Hashem believes in us. Imagine, of all the things that you can author, of what should we say every morning when we wake up? What should we say? When we give thanks like this every morning and think about these words, think about what we are capable of doing, and think about how much Hashem loves us, This gives us a whole new strength for our day. Hashem should bless us all that each and every day should be a meaningful day. It should be an uplifting day. It should be an effective day. A day where we accomplish. A day where opportunities don't pass by us, but we take we take every opportunity and maximize it and realize that time, life is fleeting and we need to take every opportunity we get and make it real. Don't let it pass by you. You live live it. Enjoy it. Embrace it. And make it the greatest day possible. My dear friends, we're going to have a readout of every one of these prayers in Ashkenazic and in Sephardic. So those who read with an Ashkenazi dialect, the Ashkenazi dialect, We'll enjoy Ashkenazi one, those who want to, who want to, who recited in the Sephardic, in the Edot HaMizrach. I have Rabbi Masri's recording. He has allowed us to, to include it in our podcast. So there'll be separate files and that way every morning you can recite it with it or you can memorize it. You can learn the proper way to say it. But this is part of our journey and I'm really excited that we got started today and looking forward to hopefully mastering the entire Siddur and connecting with Hashem through each of these holy words. Amen. Why? Great question. Why is the word nishmasi used? My soul. Because your soul is you. It's not anybody else. It's not a copy-paste. Oh, another soul. Boom. Copy-paste. Copy-paste. No. It's unique. It's special. Every soul has unique character, has unique, unique capabilities, and has something that nobody else has. Nobody else has. Nishma si. I am unique. I am the only me that will ever be in this world. This People can have the same name. People can be from the same family. But no two people are the same. Every single person is unique. So it's a very good point. Thank you for asking that. The word nishma si means my unique soul that is only mine. There will never be another person like me. Not in the way we look, 
not in the way we think, not in the way we act, and not in the potential that we can bring to this world. Excellent question. Thank you.